Hi everyone, Michael with Bad Goblin Games here, and in this video I want to go over uh, briefly how we handle units in Ages of Conflict. Now, Ages of Conflict is a 6mm miniatures game, so we've scaled ranges and to a lesser degree movement to the 6mm scale. Now, that doesn't tie you to using 6mm miniatures. So the miniature is just a representation. So you can use 10 millimeter, 15, 28, uh, you go down to two or three millimeter, you know, whatever you like, and you can keep the, the scale, like with the ranges uh, of the weapons the movement as they are, or you can change them uh, to fit the size of the miniature. It's really up to you. So all miniatures uh, in the game are mounted on bases. Now we tend to use 40 by 40 millimeter or 60 by 30 millimeter bases when we play, though other base sizes work. Uh, 40 by 20 is a nice choice, uh, though with that size you may have some issues basing uh, larger miniatures such as fantasy monsters. Uh, you'll see 30 by 30 millimeter uh, and 60 by 60 as well. When you're going down, uh, or I'll say, I should say when you're playing, uh, say, World War II or sci-fi, uh, in which case the tactical unit sizes are smaller, uh, then you may see uh, 20 by 20 millimeter bases. And when that's the case, those can be square or you also see uh, circle bases. So you, regardless, Ages of Conflict doesn't enforce a base size. So whatever works, so just use whatever works best for you. A, a base in Ages of Conflict uh, represents a company of about 100 troops. The exact number isn't too important as it's really just an abstraction. Uh, so now when you're dealing with uh, larger troops or different troop types um, or, or uh, company types such as chariots, uh, vehicles, monsters, the same holds true. The exact number isn't really important. That, that uh, layer of abstraction is still there. So your base with a dragon on it, it can be a single dragon or it can be a couple. It doesn't really matter. The stats, you know, the unit stats don't change. Now a company is the smallest tactical unit sizes ages of conflict. So this means that this is the uh, smallest unit size that can receive an order. Now, as I just mentioned, a single base represents a company. Now, a single company running around the battlefield isn't going to last. So companies are grouped into larger tactical units called battalions. Now, to clarify, you know, we use the terms company and battalion in our demos and in the rulebook. So you can call them whatever you like. You know, we do realize that you know, through, the, uh, through the ages, these, uh, these terms did you know, change a bit here and there. So you know, we're just using them. Uh, to keep consistency. Uh, you can call them whatever you want to call them. Now the size of your battalions is up to you. Smaller battalions won't be as resilient as the larger ones. They'll, they will have an easier time maneuvering around the battlefield, particularly if there's a, a decent amount of terrain on it. Now, larger battalions have more staying power and more strength, though uh, they do have more, you know, if, if, you know, if you're dealing with a, a field that has a, quite a bit of terrain on it, then you may have some difficulty moving around. Now, also, uh, these larger battalions, so when I say larger, I mean, when you get above six companies, we have some rules in place that uh, those really large battalions, they have a difficulty when uh, trying to perform command-related checks, such as changing a formation. It's just harder for that order to get distributed throughout the entire battalion. So in the standard rules, a battalion is composed of separate companies. Ages of Conflict uh, does include optional rules to scale the game, in which a base represents an entire battalion rather than a single company. And this allows you to fight uh, battles with uh, tens of thousands of troops per side. Now, now when you're doing this, um, you, know, you can stick with the you know 60 by 30 or 40 by 40. 
though this also gives you an opportunity to increase the base size. So maybe you want to use a base that has, uh, say, an 80 millimeter uh, frontage. Uh, this is a good opportunity to do that. So uh, we use the term unit uh, quite a bit in Ages of Conflict. Uh, sometimes the term is used when referring to a, a single company. Uh, other times we're using the term when referring to a battalion. So when we say unit, we're really just referring to a, a tactical unit. That, that can be a single base. That can be a collection of bases. That can be a hero. It can be a monster. Uh, whatever it is, it's... Uh, we're referring to a, when we say unit, we're referring to a tactical unit. So that's basically uh, a unit that acts on a single order. Every unit has an attribute called presence. Presence is a combination of a unit's perceived threat stamina. Different unit types project different presence values that we can see in this table. The lowest presence in the game is a single infantry company with a presence of one. Uh, another common type of a unit, a cavalry, has a presence of two. You, you can see that it goes up to a presence of five with, say, large fantasy monsters. To determine a battalion's total presence, you just add up the presence of each company in the battalion. So if we look at a few examples, a single infantry company has a presence of one. A battalion of three infantry companies has a presence of three. A single cavalry company has a presence of two, uh, while a battalion of two cavalry companies has a presence of four. So this means that as companies are removed from a battalion, the battalion's current uh, presence decreases. So uh, real quick, if we refer back to that table, uh, you can see there are quite a few uh, unit types in the game. So uh, we'll just kind of start at the top and go go through them. Uh, infantry, this is your standard, say, human-sized infantry. So this is your humans. If you're dealing with fantasy, this is you know, your orcs, your goblins, your elves, your dwarves, uh, all your standard, um, you know, just you know, human-sized humanoids. Uh, the next line down, uh, where the presence goes up to do up to two, uh, this is cavalry, and so we're talking, uh, when we say cavalry, we're talking uh, basically anything around the size of a horse. Um, really nothing larger than that. Uh, we also have large infantry there, and large infantry, uh, things like uh, minotaurs, uh, trolls, ogres, a step up from you know, a human size. Then we have small vehicles, which can be considered uh, maybe bikes or buggies. And this is also where we find engines of war, uh, catapults, uh, ballistae, organ guns, that sort of thing. Uh, with the presence of three, uh, we have a large cavalry. So this is cavalry that is larger than a horse. So these might be uh, giant spiders, uh, stuff like that. We have me uh, medium vehicles, uh, monstrous infantry. Uh, so monstrous infantry is basically the largest infantry in the game. So when we deal with monstrous infantry, uh, we're dealing with uh, infantry that's not quite a monster. So when we use the term monsters in the game, we're, what we're really talking about are creatures that tend to act uh, on their own, which can be you know, like a dragon or, or a giant. So monstrous infantry is, you know, they're kind of borderline monsters, uh, though they still off, they still tend to operate in groups. Uh, next down, with the presence of four, we have monsters cavalry. Uh, so this is uh, basically just like the infantry. So this is the largest cavalry in the game. Uh, but again, we're talking about um, you know not quite not quite monsters. Uh, they they're kind of borderline, but they still operate in, in groups. Now we find uh, medium monsters here and large vehicles. And then uh, the last one, uh, the presence of five, are uh, large monsters. So these are the largest monsters in the game. Uh, so you can see there's three different layer or three different types of monsters. Also, you know, small monsters, medium and large. Uh, you know, small monsters. If we if we kind of go back to fantasy and use uh, dragons as an example, um, then maybe uh, you know, 
young or juvenile dragons would be small. Maybe your adult dragons would be medium, and large would uh, large monsters would be like your uh, your elder dragons, the ones that have been around for a really long time. Now, presence is an important factor in combat, and there's two reasons for that. First, a unit's uh, break value. I'm sorry, a unit's break point is equal to its current uh, presence. We discuss break points more in the combat video, though briefly, a break point represents a unit's ability to handle stress, fatigue, uh, and injuries. The higher a unit's break point, the more staying power it has on the field. So an infantry battalion with three companies has a break point of three. An infantry battalion with five companies has a break point of five. If one of those companies is removed, the, the battalion's break point drops to four. The second way in which presence influences combat is when engaging in hand combat. If a battalion engages an enemy with charge orders and has a higher presence than the unit it engages, the enemy unit may flee the field. In this example, we have an infantry uh, unit uh, with three companies, so it has a total presence of three, and we have a cavalry unit with three companies, so it has a total presence of six. If the cavalry company charges the infantry, the infantry is obligated to make a command check because it's being charged by a unit with a higher presence. If the infantry uh, fail that check, then they route from the field. Now, conversely, if a battalion attempts to uh, engage uh, a battalion with a higher presence, then it must also make a command check. If the check fails, the unit does not engage in hand combat. So referring to our infantry and uh, cavalry battalions, the infantry with uh, less presence attempts to engage the cavalry with a higher presence. The infantry is obligated to make a command check, which is 2d10, so they roll 2d10, resulting in a 3 and a 5. Now this is a failure as command checks have a target number of 6, which means at least one of those dice uh, must be a 6 or more. Since the command check failed, the infantry simply refuses to move forward. Now they can try again the next turn, but this turn uh, comes to an end for that for that infantry. All right, well that is it for our review of units and ages of conflict. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, we do have several others available that cover uh, excuse me, that cover other aspects of ages of conflict, and you can also join us on Facebook at facebook.com uh, forward slash groups forward slash ages of conflict. Uh, there we kind of delve into uh, updates of development, uh, news, we release uh, art uh, as we get it in, and we also release beta copies of the game um, as we're progressing through that you're you know, welcome to uh, give a try. Thank you.